Hello people of YouTube, my name is Brad, this is my channel Adam and Orange, and welcome to the review of the Red Metal Earth Millennium Falcon. The one, this is a model of the one from the Solo movie that was released some time back. It's taken me long enough to get to actually build in this model. If you notice, it is very red and it is not the standard Millennium Falcon with the gap in it. This is, again, the one from Solo, the Star Wars movie. Why is it red? I'm assuming that's because it is a Target exclusive release of this model. The only way I know to get this particular Metal Earth model is through Target originally. If you don't know, it was released as a red card exclusive bundled with the movie when the movie, it was a pre-release. So you could, you could pre-order the solo movie along with this model if you had the red card, which I ended up getting a red card just for that purpose. And I think that's the only reason I've used it. But right around the time of release, I want to say right before, but it could have been right after, I'm uncertain, they started showing this online as a separate model. Now, I've not seen it in any of the stores. Pretty sure it's an online thing. As of the recording of this video, you can still get this model online by itself. It's no longer released. It's no longer sold with the movie. It's just by itself, and they still have copies of it. So if you want to complete your Millennium Falcon collection, this is still available at Target.com. I do not believe you need a red card to buy it anymore. It's about the normal price, about 16-something U.S., around the same average price as any Metal Earth model. And the build is very much the same as the original Millennium Falcon that was released. By the way, the original Millennium Falcon was one of the first four Star Wars Metal Earth models released when they got into the Metal Earth lineup. They only released four models and Millennium Falcon was one of them. And the Star Wars lineup has definitely grown from there. Building this model was very similar to building the other Millennium Falcon. I've built several Millennium Falcon Metal Earth models and the Icon Iconics model by this point. So I'm very familiar with it. The big difference is that most anyone is going to notice that I've already pointed out you've got this gap here or lack of gap in this particular model because, well, if you haven't seen the movie, spoiler, this is actually some sort of escape pod or shuttle that gets jettisoned out to save the ship from a big space monster thingy. That is the obvious difference. The other difference is the satellite is, you know, the dish is just sitting flatly on top, whereas in later, the Millennium Falcon is kind of angled out. The build for that is actually simple. The other difference is the neck here has extra tabs in it to actually hold it in that angle position, which the original didn't, which is kind of nice. They're tricky to get into place, but it's kind of nice because it actually holds it more proper in its spot. The other thing is this actually has tiny little landing pads on it, which I personally am not that fond of. They had the landing pads on the Iconics version, and I found them to be a pain in the butt, and the Iconics version is mounted to a stand, so what's the point of having it mounted so that it's in a flying position with its pads down? But that's just me. If it were me to do again, I would probably leave these pads off and just make it so that it was in sort of a flying, you know, pads up position, which you have that option. And the stand for this, as you can see, is not directly attached. It just sits in there. So, you know, you have that option to do it that way. But for the purposes of, of building this, I showed the complete build. The neck has always been a difficult part for me because it has a slightly tapered bit to it. And this front piece is several different pieces that wrap around. And it's always been a struggle. This one turned out better than any of the ones that I've done before, and that just comes with practice, I suppose. And, you know, I've got some 3D printed tools that help me shape the cones and shape the tapers that helped out a little. Not as much as I would have thought, but it helped out a little. The guns are a little bit different. They're just single cannon guns as opposed to the other Millennium Falcon, the usual Millennium Falcon, but it symbols pretty much the same. You don't have these back fin pieces that you do of the original Millennium Falcon, which I'm kind of fond that they're not there. And if you look here, I've got the original Falcon with its side piece that doesn't quite angle all the way in properly. And its dish, you can see that it has these fins along the back. And I've never, I mean the fins are part of the model and they need to be there, but I've always had trouble getting them nice and tight. They were always a pain in the butt. So I didn't miss them on this particular model or on the Red Falcon model. But as you can see, I've got a big plastic model that I built here 
they are part of the original Falcon, at least in some displays of the model. Why they are on the other Millennium Falcon and not on the Solo version, I'm not exactly sure. Modifications, perhaps the uh, fact that in the movie the original Falcon is pretty beat up in its escape. So maybe they're just details that are now uncovered. I don't even want to go on that, but anyway, overall this is not a difficult model. It took about two hours to build. A lot of similarities between this and the original Millennium Falcon, which was my first model to build, and it was not a bad one to start with. The other thing, and this goes right in line with every other Metal Earth and Iconics Millennium Falcon that I built when it comes to adding on these side pieces, which at one point I thought were the escape pods, but I guess that depends on what book you read. There's tabs that stick out top and bottom. Those tabs are never far enough apart. I always have to flare them out. And what I did this time is actually use my precision tweezers to grab this entire section and kind of stretch it up and the bottom stretch it down. Once I did that, the pieces fit on almost perfectly. But that's always been an issue. We get to that last bit and you think these are just going to slide right into place and they never do. It's always been a fight with every single Millennium Falcon model that I built. And that's how I overcame it. I just made sure that those pieces were stretched up properly, which may have been the case. You know, I may not have angled the sides quite right or over angled them and they didn't have enough gap there. Beyond that it's just you know paying attention to how the tabs connect and you've got bits and pieces here and there that the detail is sunk down inside so make sure when you're folding the tabs you fold them up so that the detail is facing out of the holes. You've got three or four pieces on the main dish part and then you've got the top and bottom has the one circle that has a piece sunk on the inside the landing gears are just, they're just very small and a bit tedious. I did not even attempt to try and fold those tabs over in this situation. It would have made for a cleaner look, but they're so tiny and so fragile that I was, I, I just didn't want to go through the effort. Despite my best efforts, they are not completely solid. Now, in hindsight, maybe I could have gotten some sort of glue, maybe some UV glue and tried to make them more secure, but I have my doubts that that even would have held if I try to go to the trouble of bending each one of those over and make them clean. Again, my personal preference would have been to just leave those off of this particular model because it's just an unnecessary and slightly confusing detail. Two hours, this is not a very difficult build and it went by fairly quickly. It wasn't frustrating or tedious. It's a fairly simple model and maybe that's in part because I'm so very familiar with this particular build and maybe, maybe not. You know, these front pieces were a little bit different because they're one long piece to get into place, and I had some trouble with those on the Iconics version of this model, but these ones came together pretty simply and lined up fairly easily, and you've got a little bit of a struggle trying to get the two halves together. It's always a struggle getting all the tabs lined up when you're attaching two halves, but it really just took my time, started at one end, and carefully went around lining things up until they all came together. Not a difficult feel. As far as the red color is concerned, that's a bit odd, but it's not terrible. It's off, but it's very, it's kind of shiny, so it's kind of neat, kind of unique. It's nice to have the Millennium Falcon, the solo version, in a buildable model, smaller Metal Earth form. I do wish we could get this in either the standard silver or slightly colored, like the Iconics version, which has a little bit of color, but whatever. Definitely happy to have this added to my collection, and it was a fun build, and being very familiar with how the Metal, uh, Millennium Falcon comes together with Metal Earth didn't take me any time at all. I'll leave it at that. As always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. Thank you for watching. Thank you to my Patreon supporters for supporting this channel, and making it possible for me to do these videos, continue to do build, review videos, and news update videos. As always, thank you for watching, and keep on keeping on.